Howdy folks, Jimbo here. Uh, yeah, I haven't made a video in a while. It's actually been about a month. Um, I've been sort of on a YouTube vacation and uh, had some issues with my arm, inflammation, whatchamacallit. Uh, it's pretty good now. I've been resting it quite a bit and um, yeah, it's been doing pretty good. So then I got <clears throat> uh, a cold I've had the last couple of weeks, and I'm at the very end of it now, finally. Um, but I figured I'm gonna do something a little different. I've got this RC car here, and I bought this actually a few months ago uh, during the summer from a friend of mine. Had it for a little bit, didn't really do anything with it, um, and then recently I started uh, messing around with it and uh, went ahead and ordered some stuff for it. What I want to do is actually do a little RC car build um, for this channel. Uh, this is like a, I think it's kind of like an Axial S, SCX10 type deal, 110 scale. You know, it's been used and I, since I got it for cheap, I wasn't too, uh, wasn't feeling really snobbish on it. I was like, sure, I'll, I'll buy it, you know, by looking at this uh, setup here. There's so much stuff you can get. Uh, for these things. Well, anyways, off with the body. Now, you may have noticed the front was sitting a little high. I have that because I'm testing out this new body, which you'll see. And because of the body that I picked out, it's really the only reason why I'm even putting this on the Bull Ford 82 channel. Um, it has a 20 turn uh, motor in it, it's got the factory. Uh, single speed all plastic transmission. I'm gonna be upgrading later because I'm actually gonna do something different with this motor setup and uh, we're gonna do a different ESC and possibly a 3S LiPo battery. I think this is a 2S uh, so that's a that's a thing. But uh, let me show you what I have done to this so far and kind of go over some of the issues I've had yeah, I'm just gonna blab for a little bit and we'll talk about this RC car. This guy right here. Um, when I got it, it had these on it and they don't have the foam in them or anything. They're just pretty much as soft as can be. Uh, these did pretty good. Um, then uh, the same printer I bought this from, he had these uh, Swampers. Um, they're a little bit smaller than the other ones, but because of the body that I have now, I actually kind of like the size of these better. Um, and I like the tread better. And I know these are actually on backwards, these rear tires. Um, I just kind of threw them on to see how everything fit up. Um, but anyways, um, I met, I've played around with it with these tires, and it works pretty good. Um, shocks, I think these are stock, because they have the same color as these spacers on the transmission. Um, so when I got it, it actually had, it had the factory plastic axles, and these are actually still good. Um, this front one is, you know, there's really nothing wrong with it, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, <clears throat> the axle shafts here, you know, I mean they work, but they're pretty well toast. Um, so what I did when I ordered these uh, new axles, I got a kit here, which I will show. I will put a link in the description for these axles. And when I got those, I ordered these uh, shafts here. These are a little bit too long for my use. I am actually thinking I can probably cut these down a tiny bit. I'm gonna try cutting this uh, other this other side of the drive down. I think I need to cut off like a quarter inch. Uh, it was like 16 bucks for a pair of those axles, um, so cutting them I don't feel too bad about doing. So I'm gonna try and trim those down and get them to fit because that one will not fit on the front here. This rear one I have in um, it barely fits, but when I go to do the modification of the axle, which I will show you 
what I'm going to do here in a little bit. I'll actually show you what I did with the front. <clears throat> but uh, it will, this one won't fit either, and I'll have to trim it. And I think, looking at this, I think I can probably just trim off this tube here. And then it should give me the clearance that I need. And so I got the factory axle in up front here. But when I, I get probably three quarters of the way compressed this way, it starts pushing on the transmission because the shaft is bottoming out. So, yeah, that's kind of an issue. But anyways, I got these, <coughs> excuse me, I got these new axles in here. And it was just a little bit of a... Maybe not a fight, but there was some rigging that I had to do, and I haven't done it to the rear. So when I went to put this front axle in, I had a little issue here. This is going to be a little hard for me to film. I don't normally do these up-close videos. So when I put this front axle in, uh, using these links, these are the factory links, when I put this in, this axle wanted to be kind of like this rear one, you see how sharp that pinion angle is? Well, that's how this front was. And because of that, these links up top hit the steering box or the steering servo. And when it would do that, it would do it when you got like a quarter of the way compressed, it would bottom out. So what I ended up doing was I went ahead and Drilled new holes, roughly, I don't know, a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch forward. And I did it on both sides, and that kind of rotated the pinion. And that kind of got me the driveline angle that I was going for. Now, I could probably drill another hole here and, you know, have three points of adjustment, but I, I'm pretty happy with it here so far. The other thing that I had to take note of is that really messed up the caster on this axle. Luckily, on these axles, if you can see these screws right here, um, there's a slot in this, in these knuckles. You can move them around. I moved them far back, as far back as they would go, and it looks like it put me at basically zero caster. Being an RC car and a crawler, I don't think it really matters all that much. If it was going to be a racer, I would be a little worried about that. I would probably actually bring this axle back a tiny bit. Um, so that was kind of my cheap fix. I haven't driven it with that yet, so I don't know how well it's going to be. Um, but I did notice that this likes to flex a lot easier after doing that. Um, I noticed that before I did it, this was just, it would bind up like halfway, like the links were binding up. Now it's not really doing that anymore. Now, <clears throat> we come to the rear. You see that, that driveline angle is so sharp, like these joints are almost maxed out. Um, I really don't care for that. So what I'm going to do is we need so we need to rotate it this way that'll bring this up and then it will make this drive shaft way too long and it won't fit anymore and what we'll do is we'll take these upper links out and then we'll move it forward uh, probably a quarter of an inch just until we get this at a better angle and now this one here, we don't have to worry about any caster angles or whatnot. Um, so uh, once we kind of rotate it, uh, we'll be do. I'll be I'll be a little bit happier with that setup. The other thing with these axles, you can actually remove this red differential cover. It's held in with those four screws really tiny screws, don't lose them. Um, I went ahead and packed those with a little bit of grease. Now there was a little bit of grease in this thing from the factory when, like, when I got the axles. Um, but like it was just, a, it was like a cough of 
not even that. It was like nothing. So I went ahead and packed some of that in there. And doing that made these axles move a little bit nicer. This one back here was just a little uh, notchy. A little notchy. So now it's nice and smooth. You know, so yeah, happy with that. So yeah, that's what I've done to this so far. Um, I need to put, flip these back wheels around, but I'll do that later when I'm done um, setting this up. A lot of this stuff is not even tight. I've got new uh, shocks on the way. I've got some rock lizard shocks. Uh, we'll see how those do. Hopefully I got the right length ones, um, but I guess uh, we'll find out if they are the right length. Because um, when we rotate, this axle, when we rotate it back, it's actually going to change the location of the shock and link mount. So it should actually lift this up a tiny bit. So yeah. Um, not going to lie, I cannot find my other tripod. The main one that I normally use uh, for the bigger shots. Uh, I haven't made a video with this camera in a month, so I'm like, I don't, I really don't know where it went. Luckily, I have this other tripod that I got. It's a little more flexible. So let me show you the body that I got. Let's see if we can get this in frame here. So here's the body that I got. It is a one-tenth scale, uh, 1985 Ford F250 body, but it's a bull nose body and as you guys know I have two bull nose trucks one has uh, got a Cummins in it and the other is a 302 one's a long bed one's a short bed and this is probably a long bed um, I th like this was the only body that I could find this is from the J Concepts and it was the only bullnose Ford body that I could find that wasn't a dang old ugly ass freaking flare side. Don't mean to offend anybody, but flare sides, I do not like flare side trucks. I think they're absolutely hideous. I got this body off of Amazon for $34. Um, I would put a link in the description, but I think I bought the last one and I don't know if they're going to make any more looks fairly new um, this is how the RC car bodies normally come you have to clean them and paint them yourself um, I think what I'm gonna do here and probably off camera is I'm gonna take some scissors and try and trim as best I can with the scissors that I have and uh, start uh, getting this mounted on the body so I'm not sure if these posts are kind of where I need them, but I'd like to get it to where I've got a, still a decent gap. I need to get this compressed all the way, and then I'll set the height of the posts here. Because um, I don't want these tires digging into the body, and I want it to make it look like it's still got room in the wheel gap. Kind of like how my actual truck has. So. I got real lucky on the wheelbase on this, like it's it's spot on and the width is not too bad. And these smaller tires that I have here actually look uh, better on this rig with this body. So um, when I had the bug body on there, I wasn't really liking it. The bug body, I liked it with these. Um, but I want to I wanna run these uh, Super Swampers a little more aggressive and uh, just a tad uh, smaller center, which goes well with this uh, body. So I'll tinker with this in a moment. <clears throat> but uh, let me tell you some of my future plans for this. Uh, what I'd like to do is, it's gonna be just a little crazy because um, we're probably gonna break something. Uh, this motor, which is fairly new, um, I mean, actually it is new because my friend put it in when he 
um, when I bought this from him. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get the bracket that will let you run two motors and then I'm going to get the all aluminum or all metal uh, transmission. I might even get a two speed transmission and then um, after we do that I am um, I'm going to get a couple of new batteries. I'll probably go to a 3S and then we'll get a new uh, ESC that can run two motors. Go have some fun with it. That's pretty much all I want to do. <laughs> so these axles here I got, uh, There's you can get them for a, uh, as a pair. 72 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link down uh, in the description for those. Yeah, so those are my plans. Um, since we're playing around, let's get one of these wheels off here. I want to um, drop these this hardware. What I like about these axles, they came with the aluminum inserts. I'm also going to be getting new wheels. Um, I don't mind these wheels, but um, going get. Yeah, I want to get uh, wheels that have like a, a ten hole pattern like I've got on my actual truck. I'm trying to model this after my pickup truck. This is the only Milwaukee tool that I own that's not Harbor Freight. I'm like, what am I, what am I going to use this for, thing for? This has been perfect for my little hobby deal here. I was uh, getting real annoyed with this roll pin setup, and what I found is that on these wheels, the hub wasn't fitting on the axle shafts all the way, so I actually drilled those out, and it uh, ended up working out pretty good. <clears throat> so, yeah, this uh, axle kit came with this little steering horn I think that's what it's called so accents this really nice I wish this link was adjustable now I'm not sure but I think I might be able to adjust the toe here I do apologize for the sniffles although it's my problem I'm gonna have to edit all that out this cold has left me with either a you know runny nose or a bloody nose um, it's been uh, quite Quite frustrating, actually. Um, these axles, I'd say for 72 bucks, they're fairly well made. So it looks like I have a little bit of adjustment. I guess we're just going to be towed in a tiny bit. Um, I did put these links on the shortest of the throw. I might try and go on the very end and see what that looks like. One thing I would like to do, it would be kind of cool to get some adjustable upper links. So I, you know, I can move them here and maybe thread them to really fine tune it. Or even get ones that are clearanced kind of bent, like pre-bent. And then, uh, you know, I'll be a little bit happier. I guess I shouldn't be too picky, it is an RC car. So, I've got a little bit of adjustment right there. I'm gonna just pull them all the way back, as far as they go, and then just tighten it up. Yeah, it looks like it's still just Toad in ever so slightly. It's probably gonna be real ugly with bigger tires too. Yeah, 120 bucks and it came with the remote. I think this is the remote that came with this car originally. Blip blip. Uh 
Am I missing something here? Did the battery die? Car. Car on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now, this does have uh, some Ackerman going on here. Let's see what I got. So I'm just going to do a little alignment here. I'm going to go all the way to the left. Let's see how. Man, we got some steering there. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little dial here. I'm going to set it to zero. And then I'm going to uh, take this horn out and I'm just going to realign it. Yeah, if you uh, have big fingers and don't do well with tiny stuff and then have two cats that like to jump on the table and completely wreck your day. The RC car stuff might not be for you. So I'll take that out. And actually what I'll do is I will turn that on. Take the horn off there and then we'll... Straighten it out. I just get it close. Okay, it's not bindy. nothing the style that I got here is just setting how far one direction it'll go that's maxed and then I got this other dial here that will let me adjust the just tracking and I try and have it set right on the zero. And I can tell this is going to be towed in a little bit. I think what I might do... Is go ahead and put this on the second... The set or the very the first hole here. That'll probably put this at a better angle. We might get a little bit more pull out of it. Yeah, let's let's do that. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna do this video. I gotta make something for this channel, you know, it's been a while and I feel kind of bad for you guys. I'm like, oh, subscribe to the channel, and then it's like, oh, I don't make videos. Anyways, we're gonna undo this, we're gonna drop the nut. And we'll put this through here. We'll see if this fixes the toe. I want the toe to be not as aggressive. And I have this, 
Milwaukee here is set to a low setting, so once this snugs up, it stops. Basically puts the right amount of torque on it. Now that already straightened this out quite a bit, so we'll see how this looks here. I just don't, I don't like things to be in a bind and you know, bending and hitting. It's really one of my it's kind of a, I guess a phobia. Okay. That looks way better. I'll roll with that. Okay. Nice. We got some pretty good throw on that. On both ways. jammed up. Uh-oh, I, I broke something. I'm not sure, but I think I actually, uh, I think I messed up the transmission already <laughs> doing that little burnout. I've actually been kind of hard on this thing. Um, I'll probably take this back out. It's going to get upgraded anyway, so. Um, yeah, I, I was holding it, touching it right here, and it, it was like, rah, 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 so. Um, yeah, I can feel it in the motor. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's that. Pretty neat, though, huh? And the cool part about all this is that, you know, if you break this, you know, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on tow truck and whatnot. Like, you know, you are the tow truck. So, that's kind of nice. And you can build this in your freaking living room, like what I'm doing. It could be a 30 degrees outside and freezing. Put that socket on there, Jimmy. But yeah, I think, uh, I'm going to put these on these back on yeah I'll work with that toe that's a little toed out but I can still adjust these little joints back there we'll we'll run that see how straight it drives all right I got back from my friend's place he's got a nice little tool that will trim these uh, holes out for the post you know without totally killing the, uh, the body I'm pretty sure I bought the last one of these in stock on Amazon from J Concept. J Concepts. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> got the holes punched out right where I want the body. What I want to do next is I want to see uh, how this thing flexes and where it's going to hit. Right now I have the drive shafts out because we're gonna, I'm going to do a little modification to those. Um, I'll get to that here in a momento. But I want to compress the axle all the way until it just stops. And for the most part, it does not hit in this position. You can see it rolls freely. But when I flexilate on it, it catches. So we're totally flexed. Uh, body all the way down. We're going to need to cut off. I would say we'll probably go for 
maybe we'll just do one of these we'll kind of end it right at the body line there just do something like that <clears throat> and then uh, excuse me I'm gonna kind of follow that same line over here let's see this has we're right at the jam there And then we're just at the curve of the body line. Something like that. And then we're going to pay attention to the back here. This is down all the way. So we're going to compress the rear suspension all the way. We clear so far. But if we hold the chassis and then we flex it we just barely barely touch there so I think what I'll do there is I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll round this corner here We'll do the same thing to the other side there, just around that corner. I'll trim those off and we'll see how we make out. I think we might be good on the uh, body trimming. I'm probably going to leave the body at this height <clears throat> just because when this does flex, we have almost no gap there. Now we could probably lower these posts one more notch, which I may try, see how that looks. And then once I'm happy with this, we can take the body off and we'll do some more chassis modifications. All right, I have done some extensive trimming on my uh, bullnose Ford body here. And what I did is I actually lowered the post a couple of, or actually not, just one, one notch down. And then I just carefully trim the body until um, at like flex, like when one side comes up where it flexes the most and it's not touching the body. That's how far I've trimmed. Done it to all four corners where they just barely touch. And then of course when they come up and fully, like when the axle comes up all the way, um, there's plenty of clearance. And technically there's room for a slightly bigger tire. Um, but uh, yeah, this is what I'm running with right now. So I got it trimmed accordingly. And I just wanted to keep the, I don't want this to be super tall. I wanted to keep the height down a little bit. So I think this is a pretty good height. And uh, now what I'm ready to do is, and we'll come back to the body. I think this is pretty much ready to paint. And of course, I've got to order paint for that. I'm gonna actually get the Lexan paint for it. Um, what I want to do is what I did to the front here. I want to do that to the rear. Um, I want to rotate this axle this way so that our pinion will point more towards the transmission rather than pointing at a straight ahead position. Um, and there's a few reasons why we want to do that. One is when there's a drive shaft here and it's pointed at the transmission it's actually the drive shaft is protected a little bit by these links here so I'm gonna do the same for the rear I want this to be I want the axle to be tucked so that's what we're gonna do and all we're gonna do is uh, first of all I gotta cut the zip tie that I just put on here I think uh, that's fine these can move over so what we're gonna do is we're going to drill a hole about a quarter of an inch back this way. Now this might be a little bit hard to do here. But let's see how far did I move this one. So we've got two mark. So I did a half inch. And these are basically the same axle so we might have to do a half inch also. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undo these fasteners here 
and then we'll rotate the axle and see if a half inch will work for us on this one get our pinion pointed up and then I'm thinking that we can actually take these and cut them down about a half inch now it was 16 bucks for a pair of these I can order another set if I need to and of course I did already order the wrong length because I didn't measure but um, the uh, the factory links uh, won't fit with this pinion angle that I have anyway so this is going to be a custom job here and uh, that's part of the fun of this is that very thing custom and uh, today's beverage of choice is PBR now once you get a couple of these links out this is going to get a little floppy and uh, with these small fasteners I have a little bin so that one's good there and you'll see once you get one link go off there you can kind of move her around a little bit we'll go ahead and do the same to the other side here and this will get um, just a little difficult to uh, look not difficult but it will get fiddly So, not too bad. We got our shocks are kind of keeping us a little centered there. So now, I don't know how well you can see this. Let's see if I can move you around. But right here is our little pinion. Now if we rotate it, to where it kind of comes up. It's going to pull these top links a little bit. Now as we rotate it, it also affects the right height. So we're right here at this line here. What is that? What does that mean for us? It's a half inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill. I'm going to take an eighth inch drill bit. And I'm just going to drill a half inch from these holes here. So that will rotate us a little bit. Make us a nice little hole. And then our axle will be rotated a little bit. And then our right height should be matched with the front also. Because they're, uh, the mounting for the shocks is the same as this and then I have the upper portions on the same spot so if we go a half inch from here to here um, that'll put us at this right, correct pinion angle and then our right height should be matched front and back alright I have made new holes half inch away and they are deburred. I actually used another drill bit to deburr it because apparently I do not have, excuse me, a deburring tool. Yeah, that rotated our uh, axle quite nicely. So now we have. A good pinion angle, and then we can figure out how long we need to make the drive shaft. I'm wondering if we just need to cut a half inch off the thing because we need good up and down movement. So I'll figure that out here in a moment. I've got these links tightened up. Since they're deep bird, we should be able to just crank them down. Yep, that's good. Click. There goes my controller. I'm just kidding.
Eh. That might be a little bit more opinion angle than I actually wanted. <laughs> you know, we'll adjust on that.